Hello brothers and sisters. Today I'll be making a video, well probably two videos. I'll probably do a part one and a part two so this video is not too long. I also want to add here that my AC will be running during this video. Usually I turn it off uh, when I make videos but yeah it's just entirely way too hot right now. I guess I'll open up with the experience that I had yesterday. I've been having some really really bad experiences and I you know, I'm going to talk about one of those in a little bit, um, but the one I had yesterday, I haven't even notated in my, my book yet, you know, where I notate all my, you know, all the stuff that happens to me. And because I haven't really had time to even contemplate it and think about it. It is the, the most, um, how to put it, the most attacked that I have ever been in my life. And it was kind of like they were completely all going out. And when I, let me tell you what happened. Okay, so I got my little brother over here, right? And he's, um, he's kind of laying on this little fold-out couch thing in this RV. And I'm like laying on this little bed in the corner in this RV. And all of a sudden, it's in the morning time and I'm getting up. And I'm like shaking so bad. Like, it's kind of like if it's 30 degrees in here in this little RV. And I'm like, wow, like I know the AC is, you know, the landlord came and put an AC in here that worked a little better. But I'm like, man, this is entirely too cold. And so I, I'm, I'm just like, whoa, what's going on? Like, I'm just like, like I'm freezing, you know, like having all these shakes and stuff. And, uh, and I go to the bathroom and I start to, well, at first I get up from the bed and I realize that it might be something more than just it being entirely too cold. Because as I'm getting up, I actually, you know, like I usually am attacked a lot by these fallen. But this time it's a little different. I can feel their hands on me, fallen angel hands on me. And it's... I'll be straightforward. It's, a, it's as if they were giving it one last shot to see if they could take my soul, to take my body. I heard them one time say, your soul is unique. Um, we want it. And I was like, of course, no, you know, you can't, you know, kind of. Uh, but then last night, it's as if they, they completely tried to like, all right, let's give it all we got and see if we can not take this guy. And that's what I felt it was, brothers and sisters. I was like getting up because I felt them like all around me. And I was like like rebuking and praying and saying prayers. And, you know, if, if the Lord is allowing you to be attacked right now, the chances are like, it, you know, you're going to have to deal with some of these things. You know, the higher the level, the higher the devil. So some of us are going through this, um, you know, and a lot of the fallen are being cast down right now. So, it, you know, the attacks are going to be really bad. And so I'm in the bath. I'm trying to use the bathroom, right? I'm like still shaking. And I realize that these aren't shakes from cold weather, even what I thought it was. These are shakes. The fallen are trying to enter me. The fallen are trying to take my body over. And the, like, I'm like, you know, they're trying really hard. And I'm sitting in there rebuking and praying and, you know, in the name of Jesus Christ and, you know, all this stuff. And, and I mean, it was a good while that they went all out and... But I wasn't worried though, you know, because one time, I don't think I've ever told you guys, but one time I was in heaven, I was face to face with the Lord Jesus. And he had me remember something and I didn't really know why he had me remember that. You know, like what was the point of that vision of remembering that? But now I know why, because he knew that they would give it that, that all out try. And he wanted to reassure me with faith because he told me something else a couple days ago. And I'll get into that, you know, in some of these other things that took place a few days ago. But he said, I heard audibly, I believe it was like, it's kind of like when you hear something in your spirit, but you hear it so strong. It's like, is it audible or is it just in my spirit? It was kind of a, a little bit of both, I guess. And I heard, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. You know, so, uh, you know, that's something I, I'll share with you guys in a little bit, what I heard a few days ago, but I knew I had to trust the Lord. And he brought back to my remembrance, the vision I had to where I, I was on heaven one time on the west side where Raphael was, the west side of the gate, before the promotion to the north. So he showed me at the west gate in heaven, and he was talking to me. And and all I remember telling the Lord, he was laughing at me. I said, well, Lord, like he must have just got done telling me that they're going to try to take you, Jason. Like, they're going to try to go all out, you know, on you. And I was like, oh, Lord. Like, I said, Lord, well, like a little child, you know, like like we're supposed to be. You know, we act so childlike up there. I was like, well, Lord, well, what if they possess me or something, you know, like like a little kid. And he's just start, he starts laugh, laughing at me and chuckling. And he's like, they have, they can't possess you. They can't do that to you. Like, you know, like they have no authority on you. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, okay, you know, and you know, that was the end of it. But yesterday, like they tried, like I was shaking so hard, praying and, 
and you know nothing I was doing was helping like they were going all out like I don't know how to explain it to you guys have any of you guys been through what I went through yesterday I'm not talking about you know like them try to possess people like they do like with people that are not Christians who are not serving God and who are sinning I mean have any of you out there who have given your all to Christ who are repenting and and striving to keep the commandments of God and are not out there sinning every not out there you know willfully sinning have any of you had that experience to where they came after you full force we're trying to like take you out because you know honestly you know the devil's not going to go after those who are not doing anything for the Lord if I'm more worried for you brothers and sisters if you are never getting attacked ever if the devil's leaving you alone it's leaving you alone more than likely because he already has you why mess with you he, if he leaves you right where you're at on the course you're at you're you're going to be done for it already and he knows that but if you are out there bringing souls to Christ, getting them to repent, getting them to be baptized, getting to them, you know, getting them away from some of these false teachings online, like once saved, always saved, and, you know, all this different stuff. If you're out there doing these things, Satan is mad, and he wants you taken out. And those are the people online who usually start to get attacked the most to be honest with you those are the ones who they come after that's why that little the little saying i think is valid here the higher the level the higher the devil so if you guys are experiencing that like that was actually really new for me that amount of going after me yeah they've tried to kill me they've tried to take my life plenty of times you know they tried to try to do a lot of things but it was different i don't know how to explain it to you it's as if I had the a whole army of Lucifer around me saying, let's try to take him out, you know, and, and as if they all were trying to come against my one spirit. That's how I felt. I felt as if I had Lucifer's army trying to take out Raphael's spirit, like one spirit, like, and I had to, wait, I, I just had a thought. I'm, I'll share this thought with you, and I'm only sharing this thought, and I don't believe this, but it's just a thought that came to me as I was talking to you guys, so I'm going to share it. I was watching this video of this brother who um, does the Bible codes, and he was saying he went in there without a, um, what is his name? He does the Bible codes. Well, he was going to do a Bible code on the, the restrainer, and and he said he went in there without a dog in a fight. You know, some people say it's the church, some people say it's Michael and all this stuff, and he went in there. He didn't care who it was, just, just wanted to see, and he his Bible codes came out that it was, that it was Raphael. It really shocked me, you know, because... You know, it really was. He shows the Bible quotes. He shows um, it all lined up. And it really does look like Raphael runs right down the middle uh, when it's talking about the restrainer. And it brought back to my, my remembrance one time to where I was on a container in heaven. And I was, and I had no, I had, brothers and sisters, I did, wasn't going to talk to you about this at all. Um, but I feel like it's being brought to, back to my remembrance right now. Um, I was laying on top of a container and and i was watching all these children play and all these children were playing and i like we'd have milk roll over them and then we would have uh, honey roll over them and it was kind of like i was leading them and protecting them and stuff like that and so that's kind of what i felt like it was yesterday i felt like my spirit was i felt like lucifer and his whole army was like coming against my spirit. Does that make sense to you? I don't know how else to put it to you. It's as if an entire army, you know, Lucifer and his army was coming after Raphael's spirit, trying to destroy it as if, I don't know. I'm not going to say what I think it means because I know a lot of you um, aren't ready to hear anything like that. But I don't know. It's really strange though. I'm getting all this, this personal revelation as I'm trying to speak to you guys. But what I'll do is leave a link in my description box for the video I'm talking about, just in case you're curious to know what Bible code video I'm talking about. If, if I forget by some chance, brothers and sisters, remind me uh, in a comment to put that link in there for you. And I'll add, when you watch that video, I'm not saying that I agree or disagree. Um, just for, you know, just for the study, I'll, I'll give you that link so you can kind of just check it out. Earlier when I had told you guys that the Lord had asked me, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. It's because of the experiences that I've been having all this week. I've been attacked more than ever and at a higher rate. And the deception, you know, the enemy's taking it to a whole nother level. And I'll give you guys some 
experiences that I'm having because maybe you're having them too and maybe you're just a little too scared to admit it to people because you don't want them to falsely accuse you and all that stuff but uh, I, I don't I can care less about all that you know it just all I care about is bringing souls to Christ and and doing all that he asks of me and whenever people accuse us brothers and sisters or come against us just realize that you get blessed for that you know how awesome is it to to be able to be able to be chosen to suffer for Jesus Christ it's a it's a blessing and an honor it really is the last few days what's been going on is the enemy has been trying to deceive me and I'm just curious if he's been trying to do it to you guys too what's been going on is in my dreams it seems like all night long this week I've been in space with the fallen now I know that I'm not but I but they're trying to deceive me to think that I am and the strange thing about it is they are doing things like okay for example the Power Rangers, when you guys watch that movie, The Power Rangers, do you realize that everything you see on TV is not by chance? A lot of stuff you see is because it's everything is spiritual first. I've noticed that in heaven, now in the heavens, I'm not going to say in heaven where God is, but where the fallen are, they have a higher army themselves, a color-coded army, and they actually have those kind of suits like the Power Rangers. If you go to the new movie, just I'm not saying to watch the movie. I, I don't tell anybody to do anything like that. But what I'm telling you to do is maybe just go to the trailer for the new movie. And some of those trailers have the new suit where they kind of morph into these suits. And there's the blues and greens and reds and, you know, all those different colors. Well, they have been having me all night long these false dreams to where I feel like I'm actually in space training with them and they have me as like the green power ranger and I'm like in space training and checking out our, our suits and you know I was told that my suit and the blue one are the the most advanced and powerful and do the most things and I saw the blue one turn into a bear at one time like they can morph into these animals kind of just like in the movies you know so they're, they're trying to trick and deceive a lot of us into thinking like why don't you why are you choosing God because you are already fighting with us in the spirit in the fallen realities you know they're trying to deceive us into thinking that and that's why Jesus said to me do you trust me Jason I was like yes Lord because I'm like Lord why are you allowing them to do all this so strong as they're doing it he's like just trust me I said okay so I really don't know why the Lord even said that to me. I, you know, I do trust him no matter what, but I guess the level of deception is just so high that he has to remind me, you know, like, just trust me, you know? And so, like, all night long, I mean, they're having me training and, and having me, you know, just, it's just really strange, really strange things. And I was doing that, like, all night long, like, feeling like I was there training. And the night before, the night after, I'm not sure, if it was the night before, but I had a, the same experience, but they had me in a different situation. They had me out in space on a motorbike, and there was another guy out, out in space on a motorbike. See, but these motorbikes were like in these tracks that are like more like wormholes, and we're sitting on it, and out in this distance, we can see with our spiritual eyes, like all the planetary systems, the galaxies, and it's like your eyes can see so much stuff in the spirit, way more than you ever could, you know, in these, these, these fleshly eyes. And so we we're up there and I felt, you know, even though I was up there in this particular one, I, 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 you have this feeling of something's not quite right. And so when I'm up there, he's looking at me, he's like, where do you want to go? He's like, you want to go home or you want to go to the war? And I knew he meant to the angelic war. But at this point, I was kind of catching on to what they were doing. And I was like, you know, and I said, I'm going to go home. And he's like, the war or something like that. I, don't know. I think he's tried to take off to go to the war. And I wasn't about to go into no war with no fallen angels. You know what I mean? So I grabbed his shirt on this motorbike. And as I'm looking up into the constellations, you know, I can see all the, all the beautiful colors and all that. I said, home, like real loud to him, like home, like take me home. Like, cause I'm not, wasn't about to go to where, you know, see, but I wasn't there anyway. But this, this is the thing I'm trying to say is this week, They've been having me all night long that, like, you know, I know the rapture's about to take place, guys, because they have their whole armies coming against me. They have me pretending, like, trying to deceive me into thinking that I'm a fallen angel and that I'm, like, training with them, you know, all night long. And there's, like, 
you know, that's the, like last night. I'll tell you last night that, you know, and I don't talk about falling dreams, but I'm just going to tell you, like, this is how bad the deception is. Like last night, they had me, or the night before last, hold up. I've, there's so many of these now, it's just getting, I'm getting confused at which day, well, you know, what was what dream. But I was at one when I was training all night long, and we were like these angels training. And you know, in this particular dream all night long, I didn't know that, you know, we didn't know that. I didn't know it was a deception and there were fallen angels that, that were there, you know. I just thought I was there, like, in real life, you know. And some weird stuff started to happen, and, like, this guy was talking about Nod. And I said, that's my father, which is not my father, but they tried to deceive me in the dream and say it was my father. And for all of you who don't know, um, Nod is the land when, when Cain was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. He went to the east of the Garden of Eden, and it was the land of Nod is where Cain went. So there was already a land of uh, people somewhere called the land of Nod, and Cain was kicked out of the garden. He took his people, and he went to the land of Nod. Anyway, in this false dream, now, it wasn't real, of course, but they were trying to see me, and then a whole nother night, a whole nother training all night long, to where I was, they had me say I was not, and I was like, that's my father, and this other guy was like, that's my father. And we realized in the dream, this false dream, that we were brothers, and we hugged each other, and you're like, we're all these angels fighting. And after like training all night long in these false dreams, um, these reptilian fallen come to, to where we're at, and they have more like, like, they look more like the reptiles, you know, but with, with wings, like big evil looking reptiles with wings, and we're like fighting them, and these other angels are scared of them and it's just a whole you know the whole night we're doing this and what they're trying to do brothers and sisters they're trying to get you to feel like you have some some type of connection to them some type of brotherly connection to deceive you but brothers and sisters don't ever give them that window and the reason i think I, the lord has me bringing this up to you is so you know that you know they're going to try some of these things on some of you and don't ever give them that open window think okay well maybe i do have a connection to you guys or maybe i, I do maybe i am a fallen spirit and angel and you know when you start believing that you know you're going to start to open doors so don't and I know that they may not have gotten to a lot of you to this level because maybe the Lord hasn't allowed it, you know, with his, your guardian angels. Maybe he hasn't allowed you to be tested in that way. But I know some of you are. And right before the rapture takes place, you know, we can expect that we're going to be tested to a level that we've never been tested before. So just know, brothers and sisters, no, no matter what lie or deception they put you in, uh, no matter what they tell you, do not believe them, no matter what. You know, they'll make you think that they were, you know, and who knows, maybe some of them were like you were friends with some of the, you know, because some of us here, a few of, I'm not saying, I don't know how many of us are, but it's a few of us were actually angelic spirits before we ever came to this earth. Uh, you know, God says he knew us before we were knit in our mother's womb. So some of us did live up there and some of you might have been friends with some of the ones that fell. You know, I don't know. But whatever you do, just kind of when they give you these things, don't let it bother you. Don't let it bother your mind and don't, you know, don't let it get to you. Just kind of toss it out. That's what I do for the most part. Unless the Lord has me remember something on purpose. I don't, you know, some brothers and sisters online, I can tell they get there and they start worrying about it. They start letting them letting it ruin their faith and they start getting there and or they start teaching false things. And, you know, you, you know, you got to know, you know, what's of the Lord and what's not of the Lord. And it's obvious this is it, it's not. So what you do is you you cast it out. You let it go. You act like it, you know, unless the Lord wants you to remember it to to share the thought like I'm doing with you right now. You just kind of wipe your memory and you forget about it and you move on to your next thing. That's all you got to do. It's like. You, you just erase every single thing they worked for, you know, against you for. You erase it. You wipe it out and keep moving forward. And you just erase all the work they've done. And it means nothing, you know. So that's pretty much what I've been doing this whole week is um, battling with them, um, feeling like I'm, you know, I have a whole army trying to destroy me. Uh, the whole week I've, they've been trying to act like I've been in space training and, and it's just so weird because, you know, when you see these Power Rangers, and I think that's kind of funny, like, when you see the werewolves and vampires and giants and Power Rangers, the funny thing is, it, there are actually these type of beings, they're real. Like, the people that are making these movies, they're actually seeing real spirits. Like, I was taken to this land once, this, this place once in the dreams, and 
to where this planet was full of, it had vampires on it, it had werewolves, and they try to turn me into one in this place, you know, but it's just a dream, of course, but they're, you know, it's a dream from the fallen, so they're trying to deceive you, but there are these lands where there were werewolves, there were, um, they were vampires, I mean, there were these other type of things, and they had me walking out into the forest, and I saw this giant in front of me, he looked like a regular man with a big white robe, except he was about a hundred foot tall, you know, I mean, and I was like, I'm like, who was that? And I'm like, giant? And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, well, I'm looking at this thing and having normal conversations. And, you know, so, yeah, so all these things are, are you know, I, I believe they really exist. And it makes me wonder how many of this is, how much of this is coming to the earth? You know, how much of this is coming to the earth, brothers and sisters? And like these blue power rangers, these power, power rangers, um, I think that, you know, when we get our new resurrected bodies, we don't have need of these things. Yeah, we'll have different suits, uh, you know, different shields and, and swords and all that, but your body is immortal and, and indestructible. But the fallen, you know, we're going to put a whipping on them. So they, they have to rely on, um, you know, science, you know, natural means, you know. Um, you know, the, the enemy, Satan, it, is a person who has to rely on natural means but we have a God a God of miracles our God can do anything in all things and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us but the enemy can he has to, to, to make things like uh, bio you know bio suits that protect him because you know what I mean they have to, they have to scientifically uh, you know and try to make things to get them to a level to where they think they can fight against the living God but this is the thing nothing they do or that they ever will do will ever compare to anything that you know that God does. You could take the weakest saint, the weakest angel that God has ever created right now, that has the glory of God in this angel or this saint, and you can pit them up against Lucifer's mightiest angel, and God's 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 weakest vessel will destroy the Satan's strongest vessel. Do you understand what I'm saying? God puts up his sheep. He puts up his sheep, brothers and sisters, against Satan's wolves. He goes in there with the sheep and he puts it up against Satan's wolf and he comes up the victor. Just like he put David, a little boy, up against a giant with a little sling and a couple stones. And guess who comes up victorious? God does. Brothers and sisters, God does. Even though everything is so hard this week, God still is always there to let you know he's around. There are times in my house where I had weird things happen. Like uh, I looked at three, you know, like I think three different, four different things like computer and my AC, and maybe like the heater in the corner of my house, my phone. Like I'm looking at all these different things in my house and boom, they all had the number 64 on them. Um, and this happened two times. One was with 40, 64 and one with the number 166. And I'm like, look, this is so strange. This never happens that you look around and see everything in your house having a certain number. So I look it up, the number 64, and the number 64 means to catch or to take by hunting. And I was like, oh my goodness, that it was a Lord letting me know that it's the catching away. I mean, 64 means to catch or to hunt or to take by hunting. You know, the angels are the hunters, you know, so... So he's letting us know that we're about to be taken out of here. And when he showed me 166 all over my house, you know, I go and I say, okay, that has to mean something. So I looked it up and it had two meanings. It had one meaning in Greek and it had one meaning in Hebrew. So I looked it up in Greek and it means um, eternal, age long. So that's the meaning in Greek is eternal. And uh, I looked it up in Hebrew and it means to shine to be clear and I was like oh my goodness like he gives me you know he gives me a number that actually means two different things in two different languages but it's all pointing back to the same event if this is all pointing to the catching away where brothers and sisters we re receive our our glorified bodies and you know I'm gonna make a part two but before I do I, I feel bad if I didn't you know tell you um, you know, what I feel in my heart led to tell you about the Lord. You know, instead of just ending in here and going into part two, I'm going to let you know that God loves you. He truly loves you and that he is truly coming to receive his bride from off this earth. And no matter how bad it gets for you, brothers and sisters, no matter how bad your dreams are, your visions, no matter how many attacks you're going through, you say to yourself, are you repenting of your sins? 
if you are, and that's great. If you are somebody who is once saved, think in your mind, you're once saved, always saved, and no matter what you do, you're going to know heaven no matter what. And then, you know, once they start teaching you that and deceiving you with that, they're going to start trying to tell you that you're, um, that you have no need to repent. If you notice, those who start to believe that, they always go next. They go to start to telling you, well, if you're once saved, always saved. If you're saved no matter what you do, why do you need to repent? Which is kind of true. If, you, if you're saved no matter what, you don't need to repent of anything because you're saved no matter what. And then they start to teach you you don't need to repent anymore. And who, who teaches you not to repent? You know, the Bible is full of examples straight from the Lord's mouth that you have to repent. Repent or perish. I mean, it's all over the scriptures. You know, the Bible is full of examples of of saints of God doing the things that they, they need to do to be able to return to his presence. We know that we have to love our brothers and sisters. But first of all, we love God with all our heart, might, mind, and strength, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. Do you truly love your Father, your Jesus, and your Holy Spirit with all that you have? Do you truly? Because if you truly do, you will also love your brothers, brothers and sisters. The person who hate it, hates his brother, he says he loves God, but he hates his brother. The Bible says you are a murderer. So love your brothers and your sisters and don't come out making attack videos against them because a lot of you are making a videos against people and you're thinking you're doing God's will. And I'm getting really worried for you because the chances are, unless God shows you great mercy, and he can because he's God, you know, those are going to be some of the ones that are going to be left behind. If you're not repenting, I mean, I pray God forgives you and that he doesn't leave you behind, it takes you. But brothers and sisters, if you're not repenting, not only are you not going to be taken into heaven, you can't go to heaven unless you repent. So if you can't go to heaven unless you repent, are you going to be raptured to heaven? No. So please, brothers and sisters, repent of your sins. Get baptized by full submersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says now that by baptism, baptism doth now save. The thief on the cross, people say, well, well, we don't need baptism because the two guys on the cross, Jesus says to one of them that they'll be in paradise. Well, I say to you this, which paradise are they going to? What was Jesus talking about? Was he talking about there's probably up to seven, probably more than seven, seven levels of heaven. There's Abraham's bosom. There's, there's a, probably a paradise on each of those heavens. What was he talking about? Were you there with the thief? Do you know for sure that he didn't get baptized? You don't know that. If, if Jesus was crucified in our day and there were two thieves, middle-aged on the cross, could you, in a 2,000 years went by, could you literally say that those thieves weren't baptized? We don't know, right? You know how many people in, they're in jail that have been baptized? I know plenty of Christians who gave their life to Jesus, but they're in jail. You know, well... You know, we know that there are many of them, and what I'm trying to say, that are in jail, who are Christians. I mean, we have pastors and people who preach the gospel who go to the jails, you know. So we don't know if, if anybody in that day was repenting or anybody was going and visiting those who were in their, their jails. We don't know if, you know, if the saints of old were going and, and visiting them. Jesus taught we are to go to, to, to those who are less fortunate. We are to go and to, to preach to those who are in the jails, right? That's one of Jesus' teachings. You know, so it makes sense that, you know, if that his, his followers um, and those of John the Baptist's followers and those before that, the prophets before him who were killed by the people, uh, that, that they would have been doing the same thing. They would have been preaching to those in, in, in the jails. So the only reason I'm bringing this up to you is don't assume anything. Follow your scriptures. The Bible says that you need to be, you need to repent. You need to be baptized. You need to um, build a, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, you know, just give him all you have. You know, I don't know. The best thing that I've learned from the Lord is, you know, the best thing that I can do is completely, fully surrender to Christ. When I fully surrender to Christ, then I, I, I allow him to use me as his vessel, as his temple. And therefore, if I'm fully surrendered to Christ and I say, Lord, I'm, I, I consecrate my life to you. I am yours. Do with me as you want. When I do that, then I'm naturally going to do the Lord's will because 
you know, he comes inside of me and, you know, my righteousness then becomes Christ. And Christ is the one making me a new person. He's changing me into a new creature. And so I'm naturally going to repent. I'm naturally going to get others to repent. I'm naturally going to surrender to him. I'm naturally going to go to a store and if I see a homeless man, I want to give him a little money. I'm naturally going to, you know, if I'm driving by a jail and I have a few seconds, you know, I'm naturally going to want to stop by there and, and see if there's anything I can do or if I can come by. I'm naturally going to, you know, help the homeless man down the street. I'm, you know, you're naturally going to start doing the good works by the evidence of the fully surrendering to Christ, if that makes any sense to you. I love all of you so much, and I, I hope to soon be able to embrace all of you. I, I truly do, brothers and sisters. I truly love you. You know, I don't have family. You are my family. You know what I mean? Like, I love all of you greatly. And, and I'm going to end this video here and just say go to part two. You've come in the final day. Oh, knowing God has held you in reserve for nearly 6,000 years. You have been To meet your young youth of the noble birth, you're part of the Lord's royal army. army. There are things for each of you to do that no one else can do. You will preserve as well as your special world. You, 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 you. Me?